and welcome to NTD China News. I'm Kathleen Zhang. It's Monday, and here are today's top headlines. Beijing's air quality is dangerously low, so what are authorities doing about it? A popular Chinese author gets silenced at his own book release. And four Chinese workers are abducted in Sudan. First today, the dense smog that is choking Beijing. Air pollution levels in China's capital hit scary heights over the weekend, reaching up to 45 times the normal safety level. Not only are residents alarmed about poor air quality, Beijing authorities are taking notice as well. China's leaders once described the work of the ruling Communist Party as, quote, going to war with nature. Yet today's citizens have different demand. Some of the most pressing are making sure they have clean air and safe drinking water. That's why the latest air quality crisis in Beijing is drawing attention from both environmental and political analysts. Pollution is 30 to 45 times above recommended safety levels, literally going off the charts of measuring devices. Authorities are advising people to stay indoors, but that's hardly a solution residents are happy with. There are so many cars that discharge so much exhaust, industrial pollution is bad too, the air quality would be better if the government could take measures to control. The official state pollution monitoring center showed air particulate matter under 2.5 micrometers, reaching as high as 900 micrograms per square meter on Saturday evening. The World Health Organization recommends a level of 25 to be safe level. PM 2.5 meters are tiny pollutants that can enter the lungs, causing respiratory problems. The severe air pollution has also prompted authorities to take notice. State-run media have been on a coordinated critique of the country's pollution problems. Chinese authorities were slow to publish pollution data and initially criticized the United States Embassy for releasing PM 2.5 readings. Beijing authorities have also been forced to act. They're taking temporary measures aimed at easing pollutant outputs. These include asking the city's 54 high-emission producers to cut back discharge by 30 percent. 28 construction sites are also suspending work. Chinese officials have blamed the serious smog in the capital partly on weather conditions. The city remains shrouded in smog on Monday, and conditions is not expected to ease until Wednesday. The heated tension over media freedom in China seems to have simmered down. Staff members at Southern Weekly went back to work after striking, and the paper resumed printing last Thursday. But outside of Southern Weekly, Chinese censors are still at work, and they're targeting celebrities with clout on social media. The censorship debate over Southern Weekly may seem to have waned, but the surprisingly mild way Chinese authorities responded to reporters there is contrasted with how they're treating other supporters of free press. For popular author and online blogger Li Chengpeng, a book signing on Saturday in Chengdu turned into a silent protest. Li was in Chengdu to release his book, The Whole World Knows, but security police told Li he couldn't address the crowd, talk with his fans, or even say thank you to them. To that, Li wrote on his Twitter-like Weibo, they're nuts. Chinese authorities are still doing what they've always done, trying to maintain so-called stability. That's why it issues orders like these that the public finds ridiculous. Li Chengpeng is an influential person, especially on China's fast-expanding social media. He has more than 6 million followers on Sina Weibo, China's version of Twitter. During the Southern Weekly storm, he voiced strong support for a free press in China. Li's wild popularity means Chinese authorities are careful not to step too far, for fear it would incite his fans. Still, the gag order for the book signing drew a strong statement from Li. He turned up in a t-shirt on which he had written, I love you all. He also wore a face mask to protest the gag order. Several fans also turned up wearing masks in solidarity with Li. Li Chengpeng was formerly a sports commentator. He's a well-respected essayist and social critic. In an interview with Japanese media, the Asahi Shimbun, during the Southern censorship debate, Li exclaimed that China did not need an aircraft carrier or the status of the world's number two economy, but just a newspaper that tells the truth. 
and popular author Li Chengpeng was attacked during a book signing in Beijing. A massive line of fans waited outside the building for Li's autograph. Around 5 p.m. inside the venue, this man struck Li on the back of the head, and if that wasn't enough, another man threw a kitchen knife at him. Beijing police detained the first assailant, identified as Yi Guoming. According to state-run Global Times, he attacked Li because he disagreed with the content of his book, The Whole World Knows. The man who threw the knife towards Li is Hu Yanglin. He is known amongst Chinese netizens as being a leftist supporter. According to Voice of America, Li Chengpeng has spoken to two human rights lawyers in Beijing about the case. They're currently waiting for Beijing police to investigate. As China forges closer ties with the Sudanese regime, more and more Chinese are traveling to the conflict-torn state. Cases of abduction, injury, and the killing of Chinese workers have been increasing in recent years. On Saturday, four Chinese workers were abducted from a Chinese construction company along with 11 Sudanese co-workers. Here's more. Three Chinese road workers in Sudan, the four region, were kidnapped on Saturday. Another is still missing. The four Chinese workers were employed by China Polygroup Corporation, a Chinese construction company building roads in Darfur. Three were drivers, one an engineer. Eleven of their Sudanese co-workers were also kidnapped. The Sudan Tribune says the workers were accosted at gunpoint and forced into company vehicles. The engineer went missing two hours later while completing his work on the road. No person or group has claimed responsibility for the kidnappings. However, the local media suspect the Justice and Equality Movement or the Sudan Liberation Movement. Both groups have found the government in Khartoum, Sudan's capital. They've accused the government of ethnic cleansing and genocide. Ethnic violence has flared in the region, as many non-Arab tribes have taken up arms against the Arab-backed Khartoum government. In 2007, the Justice and Equality Movement, or JEM, attacked an oil field in central Sudan, controlled by a Chinese company. The head of the JEM stated, the Chinese should leave Sudan, saying that they don't care about human rights and only want Sudan's oil. China is Sudan's largest supporter and trading partner, despite sanctions against the Sudanese regime for human rights violations by many Western countries. China has continued its support. Overseas workers and peacekeepers have increasingly been targets of kidnapping for ransom. In 2012, 29 Chinese oil workers were kidnapped in Central Sudan's core defense state. All 29 workers were released two weeks later without being harmed. And we're going to take a short break, but coming up... Sources say China's space race has set the Pentagon on edge. Hong Kong gets ranked first in economic freedom, but mainland China, not so much. And the wealthy are going green. We'll take a look at a new trend in luxury goods, bicycles. And welcome back. The U.S. is becoming increasingly concerned about the military capacity of China's space program. Sources told Reuters that a classified intelligence assessment completed late last year has been sending shivers through the Pentagon. The report apparently lays out a shocking degree of vulnerability of U.S. satellites to sabotage by China. These satellites are responsible for everything from military communication to early warning missile defense systems. U.S. officials are charging that China's anti-satellite activities are part of a major military military buildup. Cyber attacks originating from China are on the rise, and in 2012, China launched more commercial and military satellites than the United States. It's unclear what recent developments have sparked the Pentagon's ire, but unconfirmed rumors of a possible anti-satellite test by China in the next few weeks could be the cause. And for more on that story, you can visit our website, ntd.tv. Taiwan-based electronics manufacturer Foxconn has confirmed over the weekend that one of its suppliers in China was hit by a protest over wages. It happened in Jiangxi province at the end of last week, and netizens were quick to report it via the Internet. There's been another major protest at the supplier of the electronics maker Foxconn in China. The demonstration over pay and better working conditions erupted late last Thursday and continued into Friday at the Xinhaiyang plant in Jiangxi province. 
Around a thousand staff reportedly took part in the protest. These pictures posted online by netizens show riot police being dispatched to contain the demonstration. There were unconfirmed reports that police used pepper spray to break up the protest. Several workers were reportedly injured as they were being cleared away. Taiwan-based Foxconn confirmed on Sunday that one of its suppliers in mainland China was indeed hit by a, quote, workplace issue. Foxconn said it did not own the plan, though, and that it was only an independent supplier. Foxconn is the world's largest electronics maker. It produces parts for companies like Apple, Sony and Nokia. Across China, the company employs up to one million workers. Labor conditions at its plant have been called into question, with several worker suicides and labor disputes marrying Foxconn's name in recent years. Hong Kong is under Chinese rule, but largely under a separate system. China proper is controlled by the Communist Party, while Hong Kong has tried to hold on to its civic and political freedoms as a former British colony. That difference in governance was highlighted in a recent report on economic freedom. Hong Kong came in at number one, while China lagged behind at 136th and labeled, quote, a mostly unfree economy. Hong Kong has once again topped the world ranking in economic freedom, according to a report released last Friday. The 2013 Index of Economic Freedom was jointly issued by the U.S. Heritage Foundation and the Wall Street Journal. It uses 10 economic factors to assess whether an economy is free or not. These include rule of law, openness of market, government intervention, inflation, and government spending. Hong Kong has ranked first for 19 years, but this year it fell slightly from last year in its overall score to 89.3 out of 100. That's 0.6 lower than in 2012. In particular, there is concern over the region's rule of law. That indicator came in at the lowest among the top five most free economies. Yes, I think anything that uh, shows up like that uh, can have a negative impact on perceptions inside the country, particularly in democracies and how that can affect economic freedom over time in a negative way. Uh, so there is some concern about that, um, and we've tried to shed some light on that in the rule of law special section. Hong Kong's status as the world's freest economy contrasts with its place under the rule of mainland China. According to the index, China was labeled mostly unfree, its score of 51.9, slightly higher than last year, put it at number 136 in the world. The report points out that China's economy is subject to the whims of the Communist Party. This undermines the rule of law and respect for contracts. But there's also an over-reliance on public investment and the extent of state-owned enterprise negatively impacts productivity. Biking is one of the greenest ways to get around, and that's especially true in China, where people are willing to shell out big wads of cash for the most expensive luxury bikes. It's the latest craze among some of China's rich and powerful. Here's more. The lust for luxury goods amongst China's growing elite has transformed what was once a symbol of poverty into a symbol of excess. China's city streets are filled with bikers. It used to be the only way to get around. But as China opened up to foreign trade, the demand for luxury cars swelled. It was the ultimate status symbol. Yet today you meet more and more people like Yu Yichun. He runs a successful ad agency. This is his handcraft Italian Gios, worth nearly 2,000 US dollars. And this is only his cheapest bike. Some are more than $30,000. For people who don't understand bikes, they ask, are you out of your mind? You could buy a car for the price of this bike, but we just have different ways of looking at things. Some of the world's top bike companies are now racing to get in on China's growing luxury bike market. Brompton, a British company known for its folding bikes, has just opened its first shop in China. One bike here will set you back a couple of thousand dollars. That's about as much money as most people in China make in a year. So despite its humble origins, biking could become part of the lifestyle for China's rich and famous.
And that's all for today's NTD China News. Remember, you can always catch more from us on the web at ntd.tv. You can also now find us on the new NTD on China YouTube channel. Coming up next is China Focus, where they'll be posing the question, does China have too much money? Stay tuned.